the El Camino del Diablo. This trail lies within some of the most inhospitable and dangerous terrain of the Sonoran Desert. The sun-bleached animal bones and the many grave sites along the way are a testament to how dangerous this trail can be. This is going to be rough. There's a lot of rim benders in here, which uh, are those heads of rock that stick out just enough to be trouble and are so firmly planted in the ground. When you hit them, it just you hear a large bang. And, uh, if you're not careful, you can dent a rim, and that would not be good. Looks like we've uh, got another little water crossing coming up. I'm more worried about this one than I was about the other ones, even though the other ones appeared to be a lot deeper just because of the amount of mud on this trail like that looks muddy going in and going out so hopefully I can maintain a straight line and not go sliding off into the bush <laughs> we'll see we'll see how it goes as you can see the bike is uh, caked in mud from the past rivers or uh, water crossings Alright, this is actually going to be harder than the other ones, mainly because of the ruts, but we'll give it a try. Well, we made it. Not smoothly, but we made it. That was, uh, that was slimy. And, uh, once I stood up, it gave me better balance for that, but the first part when I was sitting down, I nearly lost it. Made it though. Whew. Yeah, it was so slimy inside of a rut. Well, on the bright side, that cooled me off a bit. I'm definitely going to need to use the shower bag though. Because uh, that was some muddy water on top of all the other dirt and grime I already have on me. <laughs> so we're coming up to a uh, lake bed. I'm not sure if there's actual water in it still or if it's just uh, where a lake used to be. But, oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah, that's what I gotta be careful for. My mirror keeps slopping back. You can tell how bumpy it is just by the, you know, the fact that my double take mirrors keep detaching and uh, falling backwards, and then my GoPros are getting loose as well, just because there's almost a constant rattle. I wonder if this is the lake bed or not. This flatter area. The border wall is spanning to my right. We're getting closer and closer. There's a trail we're hoping is open for public access that uh, will drive us right up to the wall. Unfortunately, it doesn't say online if it is open or not. We'll just have to ride up to it and uh, find out then. Wow, whoa, 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 wow. Rock E. I need to stand up for these sort of things, but my legs are so sore. Well, these rocks do not budge when you hit them. They just 
stay right where they are and kick your tire away from it. So I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, this is a trail we're on to give you a better idea of where we came from. Uh, actually I actually have no idea. I think we went all through these trails. I'm not exactly sure which ones. And then pretty sure we followed that and around. Yesterday we were somewhere in this area. We've come quite a ways. And right here is the closest the road goes to the border. That's the borderline. And all of that's Mexico. So that's the wall right over there. But uh, up ahead, in the O'Neill Hills, looks like there's another trail that goes off straight to the border. So I think that's what we're going to try and find right now. Whoa, that is rocky. Camera probably doesn't show how bumpy that is. My helmet is going to have a whole bunch of new scrapes at the end of this from ducking under these uh, branches all the time. It is so hot here that my uh, forward facing GoPro or the backward facing GoPro is like frying. The battery dies so fast and it's hard for me to get footage on it because it keeps shutting off. Just goes to show how hot it is down here. They're really giving me the one-two combos with this uh, hard rock and the sand and the hard rock keeping me on my toes. As soon as I get used to driving in one and switches to the other. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a dust devil over that way. It's like 50 feet tall, just spiraling up. At the same time, we've got Air Force jets flying over. What a unique spot to ride. I mean, it goes as far as I can see, so I don't know how long it is. I mean, I might try driving through it, even though mud's a bike's worst enemy. They want you to go up to where they are. They want you to check it out up there before you commit here, because even these guys, these were probably those Toyotas and stuff that we saw, they made it to right up there and then turned around and backed out, or just backed out, probably winching each other out. I just stepped in there like, okay, what else is this? It looks like they came, they backed out. Alright, so they're up ahead a bit and they're saying that it's actually impassable. It looks like some other guys tried to go through and then had to winch themselves out and back out. So, they wanted me to go up ahead and check out the route ahead of us here. Why is move? That, because... Well, I think we, what we were seeing was that mud hole at that corner. Yeah. And it just keeps coming. Wow. There's another big water hole down here. Huh. Yeah. Check this out. Not wow. Like slinging mud everywhere. Yeah. I was like, got that expedition mindset. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be crazy. I'm not having this This is nasty. Yeah, I don't know. Not only... I could make it through here, just not back there. And even here would be difficult. Yeah, but it'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this. <laughs> Watch out for feet. Ow. So, that's a no-go. We'll see if uh, there's any more lesser mud to drive through up ahead. Well, we can skirt along it for a while. And then uh, 
there's one little section kind of as it ends that if we want to do some mud we can hit. <laughs> Looks like the uh, mud is finally coming to an end up here. Now it's just damp sand which is perfect for me. <laughs> There we go, wow, that was like two miles of just sheer mud and water. You could tell like tons of people were trying to make it all the way through and then all those turnoffs coming up were just caked in mud where they would have just uh, bailed. Something I just noticed after uh, a bit of driving after I had gone through that puddle is my shifting lever felt really um, slippery, kind of felt out of place. And it looks like it did bend a bit. As you can see, it kind of scraped my uh, cover there. Luckily, nothing happened to it, but it's definitely bent in a bit more. And on top of that, I'm missing the rubber piece. So that's why it was so slippery when it was wet. Uh, I needed a new shifting lever anyways. This is the stock one and these stock pieces are so flimsy. But luckily nothing happened to the stator case. And uh, yeah, the bike does look a lot better when it's dirty. I don't know how much more I'm gonna film of uh, this part of the trail because it's just kind of long, long, making up miles right now. So, as always, I'll let you guys know if anything interesting happens. And until then, I will quite literally see you guys down the road. Oh, what's this? Papa go well, Paho. Now this looks like an old western. Like Fievel goes west or something. Coming up to a mine up in uh, that mountain range, I think. So I'm gonna try and get as close as I can and if possible, walk up to it. Hopefully this one uh, is walk-inable, is explorable. I don't know what it is about this area, but there's something about this sort of thing that I really love. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier, but like abandoned factories and just kind of that like industrial rusty like machinery is uh, it just has like I don't know it's one of my favorite things to do is to kind of walk around those areas and this whole uh, road is kind of giving that vibe. I think that's why like I've always wanted to travel through Russia really bad and Mongolia and who knows maybe one day we will. Alright I'm going to check what's up here. Hopefully it's not just a cliff off the other side. Wow, this is steep. Oh, it is just a cliff off the other side. <laughs> well, no choice but to go down. I can't turn around, so. Wow, that's steep. All right. Well, no, I don't think the Jeep should go up there. 
just a uh, very steep hill and then a very steep down. <laughs> <laughs> and when I came over, I was like, ooh. All right, playtime's over. Let's keep on the road. We've uh, finally come out of that sandy gravel area. And now it's turned into just a gravel road. But, uh... I guess we're getting more into the green areas because now there's a lot more uh, foliage on the sides of the road. And uh, we're gonna be trying to make our way into Ajo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's A-J-O, Ajo or Ajo. And uh, we're gonna be camping about 20 miles outside of the town. And then uh, tomorrow, We'll finish it up and then uh, part ways with our friends Kara and Eric. So I, I look forward to tonight's camp and uh, spending time with them before we say our goodbyes. But we still got about uh, 30 to 40 miles left. And uh, it's back onto the sand, so I guess. <laughs> This whole, you know, 60 odd miles that we've been driving the past couple hours, just all sand and gravel. My confidence level on sand has gone up uh, like crazy since the start of this trail. And I feel like I got a lot better at it, and I'm happy about that at least. So I think this is the uh, Border Patrol checkpoint. That I was talking about earlier. It says fee area. I'm not sure if we have to pay some sort of toll or go through uh, security or something. We'll find out. Snack time. Yeah. Bag of tuna. Super yummy. What is it? Super yummy yeah. or are you handing it to me because it's gross? We'll find out. That's good. He was just eating it. Snacky snack. <laughs> Salty! Pretty fishy. Wow. Salty? No, oh, it's uh, in water. Straight from the ocean. For your safety, due to the proximity of the international border, smuggling and or illegal entry do occur. Please do not travel alone in remote areas. Hike or drive the scenic roads during daylight. Avoid nighttime travel. If you see suspicious individuals, groups, or activity, do not engage them or attempt to detain them. You should leave the area immediately. Do not let anyone you do not know into your vehicle. That makes sense. It's pretty crazy. We're that close. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? You want an olive? No. Really? Yeah. Only because I don't like you. Yeah, well... Good thing I'm not traveling alone and we're not driving at night. Well, that's pretty neat. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna stick with the group just to be extra safe. I mean, it's probably really unlikely that you'll actually come across any sort of danger. But I'm going to stay with the group as much as possible, just in case.
Better safe than sorry. Uh, some sort of sensor or something for the Border Patrol. But uh, it had a little med kit box at the bottom in case you were ever injured. Hopefully we won't need any of that. So I'm going to be taking the lead for a while. Just uh, make sure to check my mirrors uh, every so often just to make sure that I can still see everybody. Don't want to get too far ahead. I couldn't imagine trying to cross all of this on foot would just be ridiculous, especially, you know, carrying uh, water and everything with you. Like that mountain range is almost impassable. Not to mention the desert, like, especially when the, today is a cooler day and I'm still sweating. I couldn't imagine doing it when it's like 104 or hotter. You just truly is its own border wall. That's a tall cactus. All the ones in this area are really tall. They're all at least 20 or 30 feet tall, which is pretty amazing. It's like a, it's like a forest without any leaves.
Alrighty, let's look through our meals and see what we got. <laughs> Perfect, just what I wanted. I didn't know I had any left, so this is a nice little surprise at the end of the trail. Sweet. Well guys, just a quick update. We ended up staying in uh, the same camp uh, for the day here. And I've just been going over some of my footage from the Al Camino. And I uh, think you guys are gonna like it a lot. Obviously by the time you see this, you'll probably have seen most of it anyways, but still it was a lot of fun. And people always ask uh, if the camera gets in the way of the experience. Um, like if we, you know, feel like we missed out on something because we're filming and, uh, it's the complete opposite. I really enjoy making these videos and, I mean, as, you know, somebody that likes to make these little, uh, videos, it's first of all fun for me to do. Um, you guys get to see it, which is great. And, uh, I get to re-watch my adventures, so... Even just looking through the footage here, it's, you know, reminding me of lots of little things that I might have forgot or just, you know, being able to see how fun it was and remember that. So, I really enjoy making these and I hope you guys enjoyed them now that uh, uh, this last episode is almost done. The Al Camino was such a great trip and I look forward to doing many more trails like it. So, I'm going to weather out this storm. It's a really, really heavy rain, but luckily, you know, obviously the tent's waterproof and I'm fine in here. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in the morning. The bike's probably loving this because uh, it was caked in mud, so it's going to save me a little bit of time on the power washer. Alright, good night. So, we survived the night, everything stayed nice and dry. And uh, the bike got a little bit of a washing, but we're gonna be heading uh, the last little bit of the Al Camino into uh, Ajo, and there we'll power wash everything down and spray it off and make it look all nice. And then uh, we'll be heading back to Salome, Arizona to uh, get Peter's bike and uh, the RV as well. But, and I, I don't wanna celebrate too early, but that was an amazing trail. I'll talk about it a bit more once we actually finish it in about 20 minutes or so. But uh, man, that was nice to have a little day of rest just to edit and uh, reorganize everything. I switched my goggles out for my visor since we're going to be heading on road again. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much everything. I'm just excited to go. So let's go.
Oh, that's about as clean as I could get it. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. I wasn't able to clean the back as much as I wanted because I didn't have a uh, exhaust plug or a bag to put over it. But uh, I kept it as dry as possible. And it's nice and sparkly now, which is awesome. All right, so I thought I'd give you guys a little recap. I know the footage got a little bit choppy there uh, near the end, just in the desert and especially on the road with a motorcycle and not that many, you know, charging ports. Um, it got kind of hard to maintain my batteries, so I wasn't really able to film. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the Al Camino series. That will be the last episode of that whole trail. Uh, it was an amazing experience and something that I had wanted to do. Um, just a long trip on the motorcycle. I had been looking forward to that for a long time because as some of you guys know, we bought those bikes in uh, 2021, I believe, and uh, we didn't really get to ride them as much as we had originally planned. So that was really nice. But now we're on to the next adventure. And uh, I think a lot of you guys will be excited about it because it's something a lot of you have been mentioning recently. And uh, we actually are on the road right now uh, we've left the desert and we're headed back to Canada. So I'll be back at the island, hopefully within the next couple of days. And uh, it's just going to be a waiting game to see if the ice is either melted enough for us to cross over on a boat or if it's still frozen enough for us to take a skidoo. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We actually are taking the bikes with us, the motorcycles into Canada finally. Um, we left them in the States for so long and we're finally going to be taking them into Canada. So we'll see if we can get up to some adventures with those uh, in our homeland. But yeah, we're heading up to the island. We're importing the bikes. And uh, last time I was up at the island, there's a lot more of the preparation stuff. As uh, some of you guys that watched that would know. Um, I, I'm thinking of doing a recap where I can kind of make a longer video of everything that happened last time I was up there for uh, anyone who's new to the channel so you can kind of, you know, understand uh, the island and what I've, some of the earlier projects I was working on. And then uh, as a recap to those of you who have already seen it, so then you can, you know, remember where I left off. So I'm not just doing a whole bunch of random things when I get up there. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to being up at the island again and uh, you know I'm excited for all the adventures to come so I hope you guys will stay tuned and uh, and as always thank you guys for watching a uh, special thank you to those of you who have subscribed to my patreon channel your support means a lot and uh, that's one of the reasons I can keep doing what I love doing and uh, making these videos for you guys so so yeah I will see you guys next week mm -hmm.